What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to be talking about some must-have projects to do in Proxmox. So there's a lot of different ways that you could do stuff, but today we're going to be focused on just projects that we're going to be doing in Proxmox. Stuff that we've covered before on the channel, but we're going to bring it back up because I feel this is something that everybody should probably have, or maybe you don't realize it and you need it. And uh, yeah, so let's just get right into some of the projects we're going to be working on. So like I said, this is stuff that we've talked about in the past. We might have deployed it in different ways. But today we're going to be really focusing on stuff from the Proxmox helper scripts because the simplicity helps the installs go so quickly that you can just get it done in no time. We're also going to be focusing on Proxmox as I said. Of course this can be built out on regular Linux machines or Windows machines. I probably have done it that way as well on other content. But today we're going to be focusing on Proxmox because we're going to be building it out of like one central home lab server. So if you just got a new home lab server or you know you're trying to get into home lab and this could be a solid resource because we're going to go over some of the projects that you're probably looking at doing. And I'll have links going out to full tutorials if you're looking for more detail on how to set that up or get it going. So that's enough of that. Let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Proxmox V helper scripts. So this is something that we've talked about in the past a few times. We use it in a few videos. If you're just getting into Proxmox, this is a great tool. I'm not going to go into full detail of how to use it. I have a video that goes over some of the details for that. So I'll put a link up in the description and uh, maybe I'll put a card up in the corner. So the first project we're gonna talk about is a DNS sinkhole, whether it's PyHole or AdGuard Home. They're gonna both do the same thing. They're gonna block ads, whether you like one better than the other, that's whatever it is. I do have a video comparing the two and I'll have a link below to that as well. But I'm gonna go over really quick some of the details about AdGuard Home and PyHole. We're gonna mainly work on PyHole because that's what I have running right now, so sorry about that. But I do have AdGuard Home videos if you're interested. So like I said, I'll have links below. Just to jump around really quick, I am going to be focusing on the Proxmox helper scripts because this is, I find, the easiest way to deploy new stuff in your Proxmox environment. If I come over to Adblock or DNS, there's stuff for Adgar Home and PyHole. So these are two super simple ways to deploy some LXC containers to run both of these tools. We're going to swing over to PyHole because I don't currently have Adgar Home running on my server, but it, it's the same idea. It acts as a DNS sinkhole. You have your router look at PyHole or AdGuard Home as your DNS server, and in return, it's going to block DNS queries based off the domain list that you feed it. So like you can see over here, I'm blocking over a million domains, and uh, whatever policies that PyHole has, AdGuard Home is going to have something similar, and it's also going to have some additional features for blocking specific sites and other stuff like that. PyHole can also run as your DHCP server. Off the top of my head, I don't remember if AdGuard Home does. Like I said, I have a video that breaks down both of them if you're interested. But at the end of the day, having some sort of ad blocking universally across your entire network is super helpful because I'll show you right over here. If you have any of the Fire TV devices or any of the Amazon devices, you could see that these are the biggest hit items in the house. Um, I mean, these are just the top domains that are getting hit. So you can see already right there, it's gonna help filter out some of the traffic. Of course, it's going to may interfere a little bit with the devices, but it's a small price I'm willing to pay to have a little bit more control over my DNS queries. So probably one of the first projects you should look into is going to be PyHole or AdGuard Home, or if you find another DNS sinkhole you prefer. The installs are super simple. If you come over to the site, there's just a copy command, and then you just got to go over to your main server. So here's the bar my tech server, and just paste it right into the shell. I do have a video going over how to install the LXC containers of other topics, like other projects on the site. And it's very simple. You just go through here and it has a quick description of the project. A DNS sinkhole is definitely a must have for a Proxmox server or anything else that you're running. So definitely take a look at either AdGuard Home or PyHole over here, like I said, and I'll have links below to the videos that go uh, how to set them up and breaking down the differences. I think the second must have for any sort of home lab is going to be a Docker environment. So whether you're going to run that as a standalone machine or preferably or probably on a Proxmox server would be make your life easier because of the availability that you can back up the VM on the Proxmox server. So the idea of Docker is that, you know, you just recreate the images, you blow it out and you start over. The downfall is if you have stuff like WireGuard or a VPN set up or anything else that like um, your media management, stuff like that. If you lose that, it takes some time to rebuild it all. And if you have like a VPN running out of it, now you just lost that VPN tunnel and you gotta rebuild it and start over again. Where if you run it off of Proxmox, you could back up the VM, whether it's to a, a PBS server, the Proxmox backup server, or if you just save it to like a network share or a drive on your server, you could just recreate that VM and everything's gonna pick back up like nothing happened. So that's why I do like running Docker on the Proxmox environment because of the backups of the entire VM. 
but we're going to jump back over to the Proxmox helper scripts because I do find that if we come over to operating systems, if you want to run it off Ubuntu or Debian, you can come over here and you can grab the Ubuntu or Debian VMs and they have commands in here to make out a machine. So it does come with default settings, but you can change this stuff. You make your VM for Docker in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. It builds out the VM and you can see over here, I actually have one that I was working with previously. From here you can install a docker and portainer over it and I'll, I'll show you some graphics for that too and then you have a full docker environment so, so if you're not familiar docker is something that we host on the channel a lot especially with added in portainer so my buddy don over at novasphere tech and a whole bunch of other contributors were able to build out this pi self hosted template where we are able to use portainer of a graphical interface and they have its app templates built out to specifically work with different um base systems whether it's x86 or arm or arm 64 whichever it might be you can come over here and you can get an app template built specifically for your machine and you can see all the different containers that are built in here he has videos and there is a master template again this is something that i've worked with a lot on the channel so most of the projects you see off of docker are going to be based off of this uh this template so, so I, I don't see like a master list showing like the um all the app templates that are in here for the docker containers but this is a super simple tool I'll actually go into Portainer right now and I'll give you a quick show of everything that's in here. So over here is the Portainer homepage. So as you can see, I have multiple instances put together, So you, which is really nice if you run multiple Docker environments. Like I run on my NAS, I run it on a VPS, and then I have a local VM that I work off of. You can link all of them together and manage them all out of one site, which is easier than trying to jump between three different sites. So it is a nice thing that Portainer has built into it. Over here is the app templates, and these are all the available apps. So I know I'm scrolling through pretty quickly, but there's a ton of different apps in here. And we've worked with a good amount of these in here, building them out and working on different projects. So if you ever want to build out a quick Docker environment in a super simple way, I have a video below going how to install Docker instead of Portainer with it. But this is definitely a must have in any home lab environment because using Docker is just such a good tool because it's so simple to deploy out one of these containers. And if you know you gotta restart, you just blow it out and start all over and they just run 24 seven without any issues. So running Docker and Portainer in your home lab is definitely a must, especially running it on Proxmox because of the backup capabilities. That's why I really enjoy running Docker on Proxmox, like I said, because I could back up the VM and I could always revert back to that version if I need to. The next thing I want to talk about hosting on Proxmox is going to be Plex Media Server, or it could be like a Jellyfin server or an MB server, whichever distro you prefer. I prefer Plex because that's what I've been using for a couple years and it works really well for me. There is multiple different ways to deploy it, whether you want to run it on Proxmox or a standalone machine, however you want to do it, it's going to work for you. I did run it on Proxmox for a while and I did run enjoy running it that way, so we're going to talk about that right now. If you're not familiar, Plex is one of the home media lab servers that you can run. So you can build out your own home media server, you self host it. And if you have like DVDs or whatever, you can get them onto a digital copy and then you can run them off your Plex server and you can stream it around your house without having to pay any of the big name companies. But it is a super good tool. And like I said, I've been using Plex for about two years now and I really do enjoy it. It's a super simple install. It's compatible with a lot of different end devices, whether it's like a Fire TV or a, a gaming console, phones, computers, it's all around there. And to set up the install, you just come over here to download and here's Plex server. The install is super simple. It's compatible with Windows, Linux, uh, a lot of NAS devices, and it also is compatible with Docker. I wouldn't personally run it off a Docker container, but you can run it off an LXC container, which we're gonna talk about next. The install is super simple, it's just the install file and then you run it from there. The other option you do have is if we come over to the Proxmox helper scripts again, I know we keep hitting on them, but it's because these scripts really do make everything so much easier to get going. Uh, if I come over to media, there is a script for Plex, I know I saw it, there it is. And this is gonna build out an LXC container. The one thing to keep in mind if you're gonna run it out of an LXC container is you're gonna have to mount your storage somewhere for your media. The LXC container probably won't have enough storage that you can set up that way to you know, have like a terabyte of storage or 500 gigs of storage, whatever you're going to do. If you store your media on like a, a NAS or something else, this would be a really good way to do it because you could just mount that NAS to the LXC container. Uh, your Plex is going to run out of an LXC container on your, pro on your Proxmox server. 
The benefits of running on your Proxmox server again is going to be the capabilities to back up and also the control of the virtualization. So if you're not familiar, you have a lot of different options that you could do when it comes to Proxmox versus a physical machine it makes it a little bit trickier is you can't really change the resources on the fly. If you want to change resources on a physical machine, you got to order new hardware and put it out. If I have a server that has a good amount of available resources, I can come over here and I could just change the hardware to give that machine more CPU, RAM, storage, whatever it might need. And it's just easier to work with virtual machines, especially in Proxmox. Like I, I keep really saying on it, but the backup capability is probably one of my favorite things. Like I, I run the Proxmox backup server and in the past I just mounted it to a network share and I just have my VMs back up you know, a few times a week. So if something does happen, I could blow them out and start over with a working copy. It wouldn't be too cool if you build out the whole Plex server, you get everything working, and then let's say you do a backup, and then you change a couple things, and now suddenly everything stops working. Now, what are you going to do? You have to rebuild the whole server, or if you have an Proxmox, you could just come over to backups. Let me see if I have one over here. Like, this is a Cali machine I worked with, but you come over to backups. <laughs> They're not showing right now, but you would be able to hear, and you would just be able to restore it, and then you'd have the working machine again. So, really good reason to run Plex on Proxmox. And definitely I feel it's a must-have, especially if you want to get into some self-hosted stuff and just something simple, a little project to work on. I have a bunch of different videos about setting up Plex and some of the add-ons to it, and I'll have links below to those as well. Okay, and for the last thing that I think is really important to self-host on your Proxmox server is going to be a VPN, whether it's going to be WireGuard, TailScale, OpenVPN, whatever the one that you might want to use. I prefer to use WireGuard because I do feel that it's one of the best protocols, and the availability of how much you can hit off of it. So we'll go into that in a second, but I am gonna say hosting this off of your Proxmox server out of an LXC container would be your best bet. And we're gonna go over that right now. So if you didn't catch last week's video, we set up this WireGuard server out of an LXC container on Proxmox. And then we also talked about the WG dashboard, which is the dashboard for setting up the, like the management panel for WireGuard. I haven't particularly used this in the past, but I've used something similar with a Docker container that I ran out of it. But over here is a nice way to manage your WireGuard tunnels and see you know what's going on with them. So how we could do this is we come over to the helper scripts again and under networking, there's gonna be the WireGuard script. Just copy it out, paste it in there. It's gonna build out the LXC container with WireGuard. Like I said, we just did a video on this last week, so if you're interested in more detail about this, just check out last week's video, and I'll have a link below so you can check out that video as well. Now, the reason I say that you definitely should be hosting some sort of VPN, whether it's WireGuard or anything else off your Proxmox server, is because if you are at home, you know, you're at work, you're at school, whatever it might be, you're away for the weekend, and you need to get back into your house for, you know, accessing your systems, your computer, whatever it might be, you need some sort of VPN. So. The best way to do it is self-hosted, especially if you're Proxmox server, because chances are your server's on 24-7 where something else might not be. And hosting it off your Proxmox server is again going to give you the availability to be able to back it up, which is going to be a nice add-on because you want your VPN to be able to rerun and something happens and you got to revert back to an older version. At least it's there, you can get it done in a few minutes. Hosting off an LXC container is going to be really helpful because it's going to use a minimum amount of resources and a smaller machine versus a full volume VM. That you might be running it off of or sharing it with other resources. Definitely think you should be checking out having a WireGuard server at your house because you go away for a week or you know if something happens you gotta get back in. Unlike TailScale where you can only access one machine directly, with WireGuard you could access everything. So once you initiate that VPN connection, you could have access to your router, you could have access to your server, your home workstation, your gaming PC, your laptop, whatever you might be running at home, you could hit everything off of one connection through that VPN from WireGuard, where TailScale, you have to do a little more jumping around, but it's okay, I like both of them, but I do prefer WireGuard if I need to be able to access multiple machines at once, whether I'm working on like my Cali box, or my workstation to do notes, or however I'll be doing it, I do like using WireGuard because it is one of the better protocols, it's a faster connection, and it's secure. So I definitely do think that this is something that you should be hosting off your Proxmox server. So that was just a few things that I feel that everybody should be self-hosting off their Proxmox server or a physical machine if you prefer, but I definitely do think running these off the Proxmox server is your best bet. It just is so helpful with the availability of the virtualization, the backup, the restore, and, and the, the availability of keeping it online. Especially if you run like a mini PC like I have. And if you're not familiar with the mini PC I run for my home lab server, I'll have a link below to that too. 
I definitely do think that running all these services on your Proxmox server is super helpful, especially if you're just somebody looking to get into home Eleven or self-hosting some services. These are some really good starting points to look into first. They help you build out your skills, get used to home Eleven, get used to the Proxmox or the virtualization side of everything. You get familiar with Linux, all that good stuff. And I definitely think these are really more user friendly places to start off with. If you feel that there's something else that is something that you should definitely be hosting on your Proxmox server, comment that below so maybe we can grow this list into something else and you know we can make this like a recurring topic and maybe build out like a GitHub repo with some projects to work on. But I do want to thank everybody for watching. I have links to all of my gear that I use in my home lab and my workstation below if you want to check any of those out. I also have a Discord server, which I'll have a link down below. You can join up if we're working on any projects or you have any questions on anything. We all try to help out when we can. And other than that, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you would like, comment, and subscribe so it helps the video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.